Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of 2K19 by GM with our new expansion team. We have gotten through the majority of the cutscenes to start out with. First of all, I'd like to thank you guys so much for all the support. We're averaging about 700 views for each episode. Be sure to come back. I will be uploading a lot more in the next couple days. But let's just get right into it. We have a lot to do this episode. We have to go through the majority of this off season and uh, possibly make it all the way to the team and player options. But first we have to go through the boring stuff. Hall of Fame inductees, here they are. All these wonderful people, Steve Nash, Jason Kidd, Ray Allen, a pretty, pretty good Hall of Fame class. Oh no, Andrew again? Well, if it isn't Alex. How are you, buddy? Hope you're hanging in there. Uh, I know how tough it can be to go through a scandal like this, as I'm sure you remember. Here's the good news. You're going to come out of this with the strength you didn't know you had, you'll see. Just try not to dwell on it too much. Get some exercise, stay active, all that. It'll really help keep your spirits up. Oh, oh sorry, I don't speak snake. What's that? So, sorry, uh, I don't speak snake. Do you have your translator with you? I'm not sure how this is going to work otherwise. You really think you've got the upper hand here, don't you? I'm confident in my abilities. I always have been. But I don't need to tell you that. You're a perceptive kid. You're so confident, then why don't you put your money where your mouth is? What did you have in mind? You ought to like this. Since you're th you think you're so great and all, let's keep it simple. Your summer league team versus mine. A pure test of GMing. Two teams built from scratch in their GM's image, duking it out for all the marbles. And what's the bet? If my team wins, you've got to hold a press conference where you announce that I'm a better GM than you. Oh, I'll, I'll, oh I'm definitely taking that challenge. You kidding me? And you've got to wear a t-shirt with my face on it. At the press conference where I admit you're a better GM than me because my summer league team somehow lost to a team that you put together. No problem. Done. And if by some miracle you beat me, I'll hold a press conference where I announce that everything in the scandal is my fault. Look, you don't have to do this if you want, Andrew. I'll let you back out now. Are you sure you want to commit? You really think you're the best, don't you? I know it. Andy, I know it. I was hoping I could run some things by you. We got a discussion at least last week's league meeting. As if you could spare a minute. I find it particularly interesting how they go about discussing potential rule changes. Uh, that doesn't sound like you. What rule changes uh, have to do with the money making? That's an astute observation, Alex. Though perhaps not as astute as you think. I've been doing some research on the subject. You, you hitting the books, Tex? I like to think of myself as a student of life. But anywho, I've come across quite a few instances of rule changes that not only affect style of play, but had a massive impact on the bottom line. Seems to me that rule changes have been historically driven either by a winning interest in the game, or a desire to expand the game's popularity. Did you know there used to be no 24 second shot clock? It, yeah, we, we all know that. <laughs> the Fort Wayne Pistons. 19 to 18, oh that's fantastic. Corn grow in January. Okay, that's that's a fantastic pun. The puns are really on point today with Tex. Well, like I said, I'm really glad to see you taking interest in these things. Have you heard of the lottery tournament? Apparently, the idea has been kicked around. I incentivize teams to play to win. Evens out the field a little bit when it comes to the lottery. Just seems like the fair thing to do. Obviously, it's too late to implement this year's draft, but I'd like to see it take root next year if possible. All a rising tide lifts all boats. What's good for the goose is good for the gander and such. That's one way to look at it, but why do you care about what happens next year? Aren't you trying to sell the team by then? Okay. Sure sure you are, Tex. The big one is that thinking of giving the expansion teams a fourth and fifth pick, most likely based on the variables of the chance. Coin flip? There's, wow. That's not too, that honestly isn't that bad. What I'd like to see is for the two expansion teams that have the best odds for that top pick. I want a shot at the number one spot. I only think it's fair, don't you? 
I mean, we gotta build this from the ground up, and we barely got anything to start out with. As long as that doesn't end up with us picking 8th somehow, I'm all for it. Do you have no faith in me at all? <laughs> I'm just making sure. Get in touch with a few of these team owners and work your magic. Try to talk some sense to these guys. Talk rival owners into giving us better lottery odds. Isn't that your department? I'm just the money man. Think of me as a silent partner who ain't so silent. You're much more persuasive than I am. Shoot, even if I don't work, it can't hurt to try. Uh, I'll, I'll try. It ain't an easy sell, though. Thanks for uh, making some time for me, Bernard. I know you're busy. Oh, good old Bernard. This, this guy was the man back in the day. N nothing wrong with him. No drama. No nothing. What is it exactly that you want? Uh, I'd appreciate it. I'd like to talk to you about the upcoming draft. Right now, the expansion teams are slated to get the fourth and fifth picks. But I'd like to see us first have the best odds for landing that top spot. And I think this would be a fair way of evening out the playing field a bit. Pipe dream. This will help your legacy. Um, honestly, I just really need your help. It's not, I'm not going to blow smoke. I can only tell you honestly that we need the help. It's going to take a long time for us to build a contender. We can speed it up a little bit with these odds. I need the help. I need the favor. It's your choice to say yes or no, but that's what it is. People don't get to see my compassionate side because I'm constantly in pursuit of excellence. There's no time for hand-holding when you're pursuing excellence. You know what, Alex? I appreciate you being straight with me. I mean, you really laid it all out, all out there, putting your, yourself at the risk of looking ridiculous. I'm in. Oh my god, we're getting him to change the picks? We're nowhere near the lottery this year. Don't be expect to round up troops or anything. I don't have time for that. You got my word. When it comes down to vote, you can count on me. I've got a board meeting across town. Thanks for dinner. And we got one insightful point. You've taken up skydiving? That's pretty intense, man. You're not worried about your parachute not opening or something? Not a lot of people realize this, but the fatality rate in skydiving is actually much lower. How'd you build up the courage? Uh, I'm really enjoying you buttering me up here, but I gotta ask. What makes you think I'll support this odd scheme of yours? You're hurting my feelings, Alan. I never try to scheme you. I know why you're here. I know you've been making the rounds of this plan of yours. A guy's gotta eat, right? Give me your elevator pitch. Walk me through your vision. Make me see it. That's very true. Helping us hurt your rivals. You got a pretty strong contender, right? And you want to keep the odds in your favor, don't you? Of course it is. And one great way to do that is make sure one of the most valuable assets in the league goes to the worst team possible. Your team's not going to get that pick no matter what. You're out of the lottery. If you want to minimize the risk of that pick helping someone who can seriously challenge you, the best thing is to make sure it goes to the worst team possible. Us. The last thing you want to see is a team that's a super team get some luck and get into the top spot and get that number one pick. That's because I'm right. Hey, we got Alan Donald's vote. The league is a zero-sum game, and if I want to hoard as much wealth for myself as possible, I've got to spread the scraps amount among my competitors. You can count on me. And we got boldness. So there we go. We are actually to convince both of the owners that we met with to uh, change the league meeting. So here we go. Um, everything is rejected. Uh, okay, good. And here we go into the draft lottery. This is a major, major step. Right now, we have the number one odds. The Supersonics are 0.1% behind us for the number one pick. And of course, from there, uh, the uh, it is a little messed up. But uh, Suns, Grizzlies, Mavericks, Hawks, Magic, and the rest of the normal teams. The, uh, a little bit different in the order, uh, but either way. Here we go. Let's get into the lottery. So, 
I forgot it goes all the way up to 16 now due to the new rules in the actual NBA. So let's just sort of skip through these top eight or so. And once it gets to number seven, we'll really start getting into everything. All right, so the Clippers have the both of their first round picks. They got one from Charlotte, I believe, or Detroit. So they're going to have the 14th and 15th pick. I believe they got Shea Gildas Alexander and Miles Bridges. So Hornets get the 13th pick. And let's get, oh, the 76ers. This is uh, from the Miami Heat's pick. They're going to get the 12th overall, excuse me, the Lakers. They're going to get the 12th pick. The Knicks, who had originally drafted Kevin Knox, will get the 11th pick. And now we go into the top 10. The Cavs, who originally had the 8th pick, are going to get the 10th pick. They uh, may not be able to get Colin Sexton with that pick. The Kings, who originally got Marvin Bagley, do end up getting the 9th pick. So in this simulation, they are a bit better than they were. The Bulls, this is originally the Cleveland Cavaliers pick. They do get that number eight pick. They still probably could get Wendell Carter Jr. The seventh pick, the Orlando Magic. They originally got Mo Bamba, and that will go to the Hawks. So that means that there will be a shakeup. The Mavericks at number six goes to the Mavericks, so we're still waiting on the Magic, who do get bumped into the top five. So the Grizzlies, the Grizzlies do get their pick. The Magic have moved into the top four, bumping out the Grizzlies, who had the third best odds. The fourth pick, which should be the Suns, goes to the Suns. The Magic have moved into the top three from the seventh best odds. With the third pick, the Orlando Magic get the third pick. And here we go. The second pick in the NBA draft will go to the Seattle Supersonics. And that means that we will be getting the number one pick in this year's NBA draft, the San Diego Storm. Very nice. We're going to get the number one pick in this year's loaded draft class. Fantastic. So there is the order for those that don't remember it. This We had the number one pick followed by Andrew Sanderson and the Seattle Supersonics. And then the Magic moved up into the top three. Now that we're done with that, we can go over the staff signing. We should be good on all fronts here. Yes, we are all good. We signed Trent Peterson after we fired our assistant coach for the scandal, so we can skip past that. NBA draft combine and pre-draft pre -draft workouts are really not that big a deal, so we're going to actually move right into the protected players. So what do we think of these guys, Chaz? Uh, that's a fairly broad question. Care to narrow it down? I don't know. I'm trying to take your general poll. See if anyone's top of mind for you right now. Who do you want me to talk about? Anyone you're enamored with? Who's the best career out of these guys? Who would you put with the first pick? Okay. Um, I appreciate that. I love, love, love Luka Doncic. Uh, EuroLeague MVP. Uh, amazing vision. Really good handle. Uh, yeah, that's that was my thought. You let him like him better than DeAndre Ayton. Ayton's a great prospect, but he's got way more question marks. Like you said, he's a physical freak, but his steal and block rates are horrible for an elite center prospect. He should be dominating defensively at that level. You, you're not wrong, but I don't know that he's got the basketball IQ of someone who's supposed to be the clear consensus number one. Now, I want to stress that Aiton is a fantastic prospect. He's got unlimited upside. But if we're splitting hairs, I'm taking Doncic. He's like a Ben Simmons with a better shot. Lonnie Walker's one of those guys who everyone passed on. But uh, he looks great with his potential. He flashes the ability to do everything at a high level. He settles for lots of bad shots. But when he's on, he looks like the best player in the world out there. 
Imagine if JR could be good JR every single time out there. God, they are ripping on JR Smith so hard in this game. They are ripping on him so hard. Okay. I conclude that Michael Porter Jr. has a potentially chronic back injury that makes him look completely undraftable. Okay. Here we go into the ex the protected players. Who is not protected? TJ McConnell. We're just going to go through all the teams and just... I'm going to try and see if I notice any big, big things going on. Sean Kilpatrick is available. Uh, JR and Corver are available. Let's take a look here. A lot of good young players. Chandler Parsons, they're trying to dump that salary. Dorsey. Whiteside is available in the draft. So is Dwight Howard. Michael K. Gilchrist is also in there. Jonas Yurebko. Uh, who else? Lance Thomas. Josh Hart is available. Wow, I did not expect that at all. Uh, Josh Hart's probably definitely a guy we want to look at picking up. Uh, Mozgov's available. Uh, a bunch of good players from the Pacers. Corey Joseph, TJ Leaf. Anybody else? Reggie Jackson, this good point guard, is available. Uh, Jakob Pearl is someone he, we could really go after. Let's see here. Brandon Paul. Oh, wait. Derek White could be decent. We got Tyson Chandler and Troy Daniels as well. Patrick Patterson and Roberson are available. Uh, anybody else? Jordan Bell? Okay, I'll take Jordan Bell. He, he's a great player. Okay, and there we go. So honestly, it is time for the expansion draft. How we check locker room report. There have been a couple rumors lately about an intense personal rivalry budding between the two of you. I think you know the answer to that. As you can see by that tepid response, Alex here is getting a little shy in his old age, but I'm not afraid to say that. Of course there's a rivalry. It's a shame Alex has lost a step or two. I don't like showing someone up when they're at less than full strength. But hey, you can only play the opponent that's in front of you. Do I want to keep it classy or do I want to go for the jugular? I'm going to keep it classy because when we beat his team, that's when we're going to glow. He's just messing around. You know how that goes. We've got a rivalry between two colleagues. Maybe he's a little nervous. You need to get a few of these under your belt before you start feeling comfortable and be able to put your best foot forward. Uncomfortable enough to show you who's boss. I can tell you that right now. Well, I appreciate you sharing your thoughts, Andrew, enlightening as always. Always a pleasure talking with you. I try my best to be a good, have a good relationship with you guys, and I think it's really important for our fans that we have an open and honest line of communication with the press. Oh, we got compassion. Oh, so our, our team values back up to 2.7, 98% fan interest, and 40 team image. Here we go, people. Here we go. We are in the expansion draft. Are these, this looks like the people I want target. So let's see here. Tyler Johnson, he could be good. Roberson, I'm gonna target, I'm target, okay. So the five we're gonna be going after are Whiteside, Bell, Josh Hart, Tyler Johnson. Uh, anybody, should I go with somebody else? Oh, I'm gonna go with, uh, not with Roberson, but Pirtle looks good. Pirtle or who else is available? Corey Joseph could be good. And McLemore. We're gonna go with Justin Jackson, the rookie. I'll take that. Okay, I have no clue what is actually going on. <laughs> Apparently we're playing a game <laughs> against these guys. I, I don't know why. I guess this is... Oh, this must be just our um, exhibition game. For Yeah, Korkmaz, nobody picked him. But this is the stadium. 
Let me know what you guys think. I'm not the best at doing this stuff, so please be gentle, but... I got Josh Hart on the edge. Alright. The guy we have to abuse is Hassan Whiteside. Because he is going to kill them on the paint, in the paint, and on the boards. Good defense right there. Let's get that up. Oh, we got Josh Hart going all the way. I'm pulling up. Whiteside on the glass. That is what he does. So, what do you know? We're taking the victory. Honestly, this is a pretty boring game, so I'm only going to show you guys a couple highlights. But this team did really well. There's, they're young, they're athletic, they're shooters, they're, they're very good. I don't know what that other team was made of, but this was pretty much just a, a way to feel out who we really wanted to pick for this expansion draft. So now that that is over, it is time for the moment that we all have been waiting for. The expansion teams in the expansion draft. They, okay, so they choose Hassan Whiteside with the number one pick. So we're going to have the second and third pick. I'm looking at, first off, uh, I think we're going to go Josh, uh, uh, not Josh, uh, yeah, Josh Hart. And then after that, oof, it gets pretty tough. I'm looking at Bianca Hurdle actually, as a center that we could use. So we're gonna go with, we're gonna go with Josh Hart first. And then wait a minute, Jordan Bell is on, so let's see here. He's very loyal, which is good. So I'm hoping that maybe we could re-sign him yeah we could re-sign him and he could be the one of the cornerstones with Josh Hart so we're gonna go with Jordan Bell and Josh Hart okay so now looking at the drafted players I believe TJ McConnell and another I believe Reggie Jackson were taken so we have our small for our power forward and shooting guard now, we have back-to-back -back picks, so point guard and a center, possibly. I'm looking at Corey Joseph. I want to take a look at his contract. He's on a player contract this year, so he'll most likely accept that. So we could go with him. Uh, he's really the only other point guard that's there that we would want. Not much on the power or, or small forward sign. We still have Pearl. I'm going to pick up Jakob Pearl. And then we are going to get another one, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up Corey Joseph. So the Seattle Supersonics pick up Dwight Howard and Kenneth Fareed. So now if you look who we have, we have everybody except the small forward. So we're going to go with a small forward and or shooting guard and then the next player available. And thankfully, Justin Jackson is actually still on the board, so I'm definitely going to pick him up. And then we need our sixth man, or honestly, one of the key pieces to our bench. So I want to get somebody on a decent contract. Let me take a look at Royce O'Neal. He's on a two-year contract. I'm, I think I'm going to take him. We'll get him on his two-year team extension. He'll be a good shooter off the bench. And also, Ro Roberson taken, and Sandarius Thornwell taken. Okay. So we have basically anything besides a small forward. I don't want to absorb too much, too much salary right now. We just got another small forward, correct? So Ben McLemore on a one-year $5 million deal. Who else? Sean Kilpatrick could be a good guard coming off the bench. Who are the youngest players in this? Frank Jackson. Zoki, Tyler Dorsey, Biombo. I think we're going to go with more shooting. And we're going to go with Ben McLemore. He's also on a one year deal. And also, okay, so we have our backup three and two, so we need a one, four, or five. Frank Jackson, Derek White is there, but he's 24 already. One, four. Ooh, wow. Not many fours left. Uh, we could honestly convert one of these guys to a power forward. So that's what I'm probably going to look to do. Who's a younger player that we could develop? Um, 
I think I'm going to pick up Daniel Tice. Yeah, we're going to pick up Daniel Tice. And then... So we have our backup 2, 3, and 5. So 1 and 4. Semi Ojale's taken. I'd rather get the point guard. I'd rather pick up Frank Jackson. 20 years old. Uh, looks like a pretty decent prospect as well. And then our final pick... Looks like we're going to need another center or power forward. So let's pick up Zoki. Why not? Jared Dudley is taken. And J.R. Henny Smith. Now all that's left is centers and small forwards. Uh, I'll pick up Sean Kilpatrick for two years. And um, let's see here. Isaiah Whitehead is available. Um, Brandon Paul could be decent. Let's get people with long contracts. I'll pick up Derek White. Isaiah Whitehead and Evan Turner are selected. So uh, I'm honestly just going to fill out the rest of them with centers. There's really not much left. Uh, I'll pick up Cole Aldridge. He's on a team option. Uh, and who else is on a team option that I can pick up? I'll pick up Lance Thomas as well. And the Super Sonics. There we go. So that is the team. We're back down to 2.5 billion. We lost 200 million in that. But that will be our fantasy draft.